It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Anne Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, and today I'm excited to welcome podcaster, voiceover actor, speaking and recording coach, Nick Redman to the podcast. Hey, Nick, how are you? Hi. I'm so delighted to be back. Yes. Gosh, I've had you and also Leah from VoiceOver Social Podcast a couple of times already, and now yeah. I get to have you all to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't need Leah to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> do we? We can do this on our own. There we go. Absolutely. <laughs> so I've been dying to talk to you about what I feel is your specialty. You are like the guru of vocal health. And I have been wanting to talk to you about that for quite some time. And I know that our boss listeners will have such value out of the wisdom that you have to share about vocal health. I'm all for so it. let's start. And actually, I will say that I rushed into my booth this morning and I did not warm up. And I am speaking and I want my voice to be in tip top shape. And I know that everybody always <laughs> says, well, what vocal warm up should I do? And are they important? And what can they do to help me get into tip top performance shape? Right. So, first thing in the morning, there's a couple of things I think are really important. And also, just to dispel a few myths that kind of put people off warm ups, I mm -hmm. think, as well, sometimes, you know, because people are like, oh, I don't have time to warm up. Oh, right. God. I don't know what to do. Like, my voice is fine. I don't need a warm up. You know, I hear all of the excuses, Anne. All of the excuses. Oh, I'm sure you do. Uh, it's like getting on the <laughs> exercise bike, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. do it. I'm going to do it. I know it's good for me, but I don't do it. So let's talk about why okay. we should. So, the thing about a warm-up is it's about preparing you to be like the best you can be as a speaker. That's basically mm -hmm. it. You might be able to get, I mean, we all speak without warming up every day. Like, that's just life. I can communicate with my husband. I can mm -hmm. talk to my child in whatever emotion that requires mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time. Right. I can order coffee. <laughs> you know, I can do what I need to do. But the thing about a warm-up is when you're, let's call it an elite vocal performer like mm. all your listeners. I like is that. that it's good, isn't it? I'm an elite vocal performer. Elite vocal performer. I yes, love you that. Are. <laughs> <laughs> it's that you got to find something extra, right? And yeah. also, you've sometimes got to speak in a way that is maybe slightly outside of your habitual place. Like mm. if you're doing a really excited read or a really kind of sensual read or a mm. video game or a character or something that even requires you, for example, audiobook narrators. They have mm. all of my respect. <laughs> you have to record for like thousands of hours, hours for like yeah. days and then read another book in the evening and then do another book. I mean, like it's insane. So elite vocal performers have to find something else. And I think that something else can just be longevity and consistency mm. and a healthy voice that will be there for you and sound the same in the morning as it does in the afternoon or the evening. Or that something else could be going outside your comfort range to play a really big character or do mm -hmm. loads of grunts or something that's just different. And what a warm-up does is helps you prepare for that. So mm. the main things to focus on for a warm-up are the fact that it's like, for me, more than about just tongue twisters and clarity because that seems mm -hmm. to be where a lot of people start right. like ah, I need a warm up Peter Piper right. Peter Piper Peter Piper Peter Piper and like sure. and that's the first place that they go so what I advocate for because that's what I was trained as as a voice practitioner and as a performer is like a full body holistic body mm. mind breath <laughs> approach mm -hmm. that being said still doesn't have to take very long mm -hmm. so it's all about remembering that you do have a body underneath your larynx <laughs> so that needs a little bit of like I do, freedom. Yes. Yeah, well mm -hmm. done. Could you imagine if we were all floating larynxes? Like I feel like that would actually be quite nice for me because I love a larynx, but I like the visual. I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a little larynx on feet. Floating around. Just floating. <laughs> so it's about getting the body, the breath, even your head in the yeah. game a wee bit. And that's what I love about warm ups is that you can use them and this is my current soapbox is that, you know, when people say, well, I don't have time to warm up, it doesn't have to take a long time. So five to right. ten minutes of the right exercises, because often mm -hmm. people are doing things that aren't the most efficient for their voice. 
And secondly, your warm up can actually save you time and it does save you time because if you take five to 10 minutes to warm up before you start, you will trip up over less words. So you mm. will have less editing or less That's important. Yeah. So important. Mm-hmm. Reduce the editing. Yes, please. <laughs> I mean, really, I remember when I had my first stack that someone prepared for me that I could apply to my audio file and I was like, oh my God, I just saved so much time. If I can save even more time on my editing, oh my gosh, I can yeah, exactly. do more jobs and be happier. That's yeah. for sure. So it saves you time because you don't have to do like pickups because you tri- trip yeah. over your tongue. She mm-hmm. says tripping up over her tongue. That always yeah. happens. <laughs> it's irony. <laughs> the irony of all that. <laughs> That's me taking the mickey out of myself. Like, you know what I mean? Imposter syndrome. Like, you think you're so good at this. I'm going to show you. No, you had to give a viable possible. example. Yeah. <laughs> and that's interesting because I will say that before I was a voice actor, I taught. And so I worked at a school and I would do these day-long seminars or day-long workshops where I would have to use my voice. And I would absolutely be feeling it by the end of the day. And I'm mm. quite sure that it is a muscle and that it needs to be worked. And especially because I do a lot of narration. I don't do audiobooks, but I do a lot of e-learning. I do a lot of corporate narration. And I'm always talking to my students that it is a muscle that needs to be worked. Mm. And gosh, it would really help to not trip up so much, right? I'm always saying be more efficient in the booth so you have to spend less time editing. Get it right in the booth. And so I can totally see that. And I will say that sometimes I'm doing other things like marketing or I'm coaching or doing other things. And by the time I get to those auditions late at night, because I think all of my agents are in cahoots with one another because (laughs) they send me these auditions late at night at the end of the day and I am so tired. And I will notice Sometimes my jaw gets a little bit sore and I'm like, there's got to be something here that I'm doing that is not right, that's making my jaw sore. Like I'm holding tension somehow, somewhere in my jaw. Yeah, there's loads of different things that we Mm -hmm. can play around with to sort of minimize those little niggles that creep up. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes those niggles over a period of time become something that's much more of an issue. So yeah, I can talk to you about jaw and we can have a little release. But just before we do it, in terms of the warm up and the why, saves you time because of the tongue trip ups. Also saves you time because if you like do some exercises to release tension, like you said, the jaw, the tongue, the lips, the mm-hmm. throat, the body, get the breath moving, play with your range as well. So you get lots of vocal color and expression in there. Then when you get to your script and you are thinking about what you've got to say and the lines are there and who you've got to communicate with and all that kind of stuff, all you have to worry about is the words and the person mm-hmm. that you're talking to. You don't have to think about your voice. Right, you don't have to right. think about being interesting and changing color and doing weird things with pitch and mm-hmm. weird, strange things with the prosody to make it sound interesting because that's one of my bugbears sometimes with voiceovers is I feel like they're trying too hard to make their voices sound interesting Yes. instead of focusing on the listener. So like what I mm-hmm. love about a warm-up is that when you give someone really, a really simple warm-up, it prepares them and frees everything up so that their voice goes wherever their intention needs it to in order to communicate the message. So that also saves that. you time. I love that. And I love the fact that you mentioned that people, they tend to try to sound like or predict what people want them to sound like. So they're trying to do all these like vocal acrobatics when yeah. in reality, we have to have intention and we need that intention to be able to not betray us when we want to express an emotion in that. And I feel that, yes, having not to have to listen or worry about your voice not necessarily being there for you, I think is amazing. So I love how you've turned it into not like something that's like, oh God, I have to do a vocal warm up, into how it really truly helps your performance. And I think really to be a better actor, right? Yeah, 100%. It's just prepping mm-hmm. all the bits so that they go where you need them to go without you thinking about them. Mm-hmm. It's about the yes. right kind of muscle memory and prepping everything. And also, like, my approach is about making it like fun and interesting and nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and making it quick and easy and something that sort of slots into your routine and can become a habit. And the other thing I came across recently as a bit of a warm-up is useful because theory is that because it works on the body and the breath, and I always advocate a wee mindful minute before you start just to focus on what your body needs and what your breath sure. feels like it needs and how your voice is feeling, is it is actually almost like a wee bit of a mindfulness practice or a mental health mm-hmm. practice as well. So if you're someone who likes a bit of meditation or body work or breath work in the morning, you can incorporate all that into your warm-up warm-up and then you're getting like 
two or three birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah. And I think in addition to the vocal work, the breath work too is so important. Mm. And that is part of a good vocal warm-up, I assume. Yeah, definitely. In your recommendations. Because I feel like for me, a while ago I had a health issue and had surgery and I wasn't able to breathe as well because I had surgery in my chest area. And I noticed that I had to start learning how to really breathe and take diaphragmatic breaths, like big, deep breaths. And the really cool thing about that is that, yes, I healed. But also, it allowed me to really understand how powerful breathing is to my performance, especially when you're doing long format and when the copy isn't necessarily written pretty or written well. <laughs> oh, no, no. All my copies always written oh. perfectly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Always. Yeah, when the copy's all <laughs> over the place and you need to be able to execute that effortlessly, that is where a good, strong breath is so empowering. Yeah. Really, truly empowering, more so than I ever imagined. So in a way, it was good that I kind of learned that I needed to breathe and how much power it could really give me for my performance. So I love working on breath. It's one of my favorite things, particularly mm. with voiceovers, because mm. there are some like interesting misconceptions and hangovers from like earlier breath methodologies in voice mm. world that make people who are doing voiceover seem like they have to work a bit harder because they don't quite understand what's going on with the breath. Sure, sure. So what I work with in terms of breath is I kind of get people to forget about the diaphragm completely. Mm. Okay. <laughs> because... Every breath is diaphragmatic, right? It's the primary mm -hmm. muscle of breathing. So you can't okay. not breathe with your diaphragm. So it's kind of a semantics with the language in one oh, sense. Okay. Maybe I was meaning deep breath. Then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, this is the point. Okay. Yeah. Got it. When people come to me and they say, I need to breathe from or with or using my diaphragm, mm -hmm. what I find they're trying to do it rather than letting it happen. And what that leads to is people trying to breathe mm -hmm. through their belly or mm -hmm, deep mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And that leads to engagement of muscles that don't need to be used. Ah. So what I advocate for and tend to explore is release and flow and movement because big breaths are great for long phrases sometimes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and sometimes for powerful stuff if that's what you need. But also similarly, breath is as much about knowing that sometimes you only need a little breath or you only mm -hmm. need a medium-sized breath because actually what we need is the right amount of breath for the sentence we've got to yes. say. No yes. more, no less. And that mm -hmm. in itself is sort of an interesting skill to play with and acquire. So all the work mm -hmm. I do around breath is like, Diaphragm be gone. Okay. And just awesome. work on release of the belly, a little bit of gentle engagement on the out breath and on the voice mm, and mm -hmm. just understanding what you're capable of really. But breath's like my big love breath. That intrigues me because I'm always talking about when you have that long run on sentence, right? And a voice talent doesn't necessarily anticipate it and they run out of breath at the weird part, right? At the part where it doesn't sound natural. <laughs> yeah. I'm always trying to get them to read ahead, understand where you might need to breathe mm -hmm. in order to make that sound natural. How does that come into play with your breathing? So my thing is making sure that the breath system is responsive enough and free enough mm -hmm. to breathe quickly when those little top-ups okay. are needed. Quickly mm -hmm. and easily and silently. And silently. When those little top-ups mm -hmm. are needed. Because I know that often in voiceover, there are various things that get in the way of it feeling like you know how much breath you even need. Right. Or you're halfway through a sentence and you realize it's four times longer than you thought it was right. going to be. Right, absolutely. So there's a really interesting thing about breath whereby when we're talking in conversation to our mates, right, we don't run out of breath. Our body exactly. knows how much mm -hmm. breath we need for the thought. But when you're working with other people's thoughts, yes. and voiceover, yes. you don't know where they fucking end. Like, and some mm -hmm. of them are, like you say, not written very well. Right. <laughs> so you could be halfway through and you suddenly realize it's like loads longer than it needs to be. But ultimately, as long as we're engaged and connected to the words and what we have to say, that sentence can sort of be as long as it wants. And yes. as long as our breath is free and we know which bits to release when we need the breath to come in to top up for us, mm -hmm. and you keep that intention of that thought in the background until the end, you can sort of breathe as much as you want. The reason I think this is important and crucial is because sometimes voiceovers push, 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 push right yes. to the end of a thought and then everything gets right. a little bit kind of like tense. Yeah. And it's not good Absolutely. for your breath and it feels right. horrible. And it doesn't sound connected. It sounds yeah. like, oh my God, I'm going to run out of breath. Yeah, yeah. it's not nice for yeah. the listener anyway. Sure. For us, as social listeners, we are used to hearing really long meandering thoughts yes. with our friends and our family. Absolutely. Like, we're used to people starting a thought and not really knowing where it's going and then they breathe a bit to top up and then they go sure. off in another direction and we stay with them because we're interested and because their intention is true. Like they want to tell us the thing, right? So the theory is sort of the same with voiceover for me that the sentence can be as long as a sentence needs to be. As long sure. as you 
or like committed to communicating that sentence and the breath system behind it is free to respond and be flexible and fill up when you need to, then that's okay. So yeah, so I work a lot with helping people understand how to get the breath in nice and quickly and silently, how to support the breath when they need to, also how to know where the point is that they need to top up. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like the organization of the thoughts. Yeah, when I'm yeah. talking to my students, I'm like, look, you don't hear us breathe when we're talking to one another. We're basically breathing before we start talking, maybe after we finish talking, and then where there's commas or intended commas. And so that's typically where I say you've got to figure out where that breath goes. If it's super long, just kind of organize the thought and then speak that thought. I mean, if you're in that scene, you'll speak the thought without necessarily running out of breath in the middle of it. Now, yeah. I'm so conscious of my breathing right now. I'm like, <laughs> it's beautiful, <laughs> You do great because look, you're alive. Yeah, right. That's you're alive we need that. and you're making voice. That. It's perfect. Yeah, I interviewed Barbara Houseman for the Voice Coach podcast, one of my podcasts, and she's this remarkable voice practitioner. Who I have a massive. I've worked with her on and off for years, and I trained with her at drama school and stuff. And she's amazing. And she always says, "Well, this is what she said to me was because there used to be a thought in kind of drama training that was like one breath, one thought, one breath, mm-hmm. one thought. And then you look at Shakespeare, and the thoughts are like nineteen sentences long. Sure, like, this is sure. never going to work. So she reframed it for me, and she said, "It's not about it being one breath." It's about mm-hmm. it being one thought. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. I can keep I like that. that thought going and breathe wherever I need to because mm-hmm. breath is part of the communication as well. Now, I know for some types of voiceover, you have to take the breath out and it's like fine. Although I feel like with the event, this AI nonsense that's going on, we need the breaths because it's real and human, but that's sure. just... Sure. No, that's just me. But like as long as you know that you need to say the words, you need to communicate the thing and you need to affect the person listening, you can let the breath come in whenever you want to, Mm -hmm. as long as it's Mm -hmm. free and easy. So that's what I work on. I work a lot on making the breath easy, responsive, habitual and kind of instinctive. Mm -hmm. I try and take people back a lot to noticing breath completely at rest and then we build up from there and then we build on sound and then we build on thought lengths and things like that. So yeah, love it. Wow. So in addition to breath being incredibly important, (laughs) when we're talking about performance in extreme emotion or extreme, let's say, in video games or we're having something that's highly emotional where we have to probably utilize our voice more than a normal conversation level, Mm -hmm. what are your tips for, I don't want to scream the night before I have to record, maybe, (laughs) because I don't want to hurt my voice. Or, you know, a lot of times people are like, well, don't cough, try to like clear your breath gently. And there's so many different things that people tell you to do to kind of preserve your voice. What tips do you have for that? So for extreme sessions, Mm -hmm. definitely a full body warm up. And I would also put in place some sort of mid-session resets. So two or three minutes of release exercises for the body and the vocal tract, so the throat, the tongue, the lips and the jaw and things. Every half an hour or so, just ask for a couple of minutes just to reset things so Mm. that if any strain has taken place or if any tension is creeping in, you can reset things and release things a little bit. So that's really useful. Always hydrate, of course, Mm -hmm. at least the day before, if not like the week before. Can you hydrate too much? Oh my God, yeah. You can have okay. too much of a good thing. People get a bit obsessed with like the mm. fact that it needs to be water and they carry these water things around that like mm. petrol cans. Like, I got eight liters of water here. Yeah, and yeah. And it's like, my arm would fall off, A. And B, I'm weighing all the time anyway. Like the last yeah. thing you need is eight liters of water. So yeah. the general guideline at the moment is one mil per calorie burned, right? <laughs> per day is sufficient okay. to keep you hydrated. So okay. for a female, that's like, 1500 mm-hmm, for a male mm-hmm. that's about 2000 depending okay. on your exercise so if you exercise more you might need right. a little bit less right. Right. if you're a lazy old fecker and you're on the sofa all the time <laughs> then you would probably be fine but it's also about your diet as well so if you are yeah. a raw food vegan living in a rainforest you're probably getting more water from your food and mm-hmm. hydration from your food than someone who like lives in the city and eats frozen pizza all day right right, right. so It's a holistic thing, like it's environment, it's food, Mm -hmm. it's the fluid you take in. All fluids count towards systemic hydration, so that's hydration of the whole body. So anything Mm. you drink that's wet will help you hydrate and counts. Even coffee, like... I was just going to (laughs) say, so I do have to have my cup of coffee every morning. I have about one cup. And people are always like, don't drink coffee, it will dry you out. And I'm like, well, I always chase it with a lot of water, so... 
grit. <laughs> like, I mean, for me, it, that's, yeah. oh, good. That For me, it worked. I mean, I try not to drink a ton of coffee before a session in the morning. But mm. here's a question. These days, I utilize the morning hours because my voice just tends to be a little bit lower before it's warmed up to actually do some voiceover work. Is there a way that you can warm up so that you can maintain that? And what is that phenomenon? <laughs> what is that phenomenon where your voice is lower in the morning, typically? So my hypothesis for this is that mm. you're more released. So the mm. vocal folds, to change pitch, i.e. go higher and lower, mm-hmm, the vocal mm-hmm. folds get longer and thinner to go high okay. and shorter and fatter to go low. Okay. And then they vibrate, have different number of oscillations per second, right? Because of okay. the size. Mm-hmm. The higher you go, the slightly more stretched and tense the vocal folds get. Mm-hmm, the lower mm-hmm. they are, the more slack they are. So oh, okay. when you've yep. been asleep and lying flat with mm-hmm. your lovely natural breath, you know, not worrying about anything, all your muscles are released, your throat's released and rested and lovely. I would imagine in the morning your vocal folds are just a little bit fatter and more released. Ah. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Look at those fat folds. Look Hello. at those fat vocal folds. Hey, okay. I don't mind having fat vocal folds. And yeah. I, sometimes people pay me for those, for, yeah, for those fat exactly. vocal folds Show me your fat in the folds. morning. Yeah, <laughs> It's great. So I think that's what it is. And then the more you mm. talk during the day, mm-hmm. the more your body takes on a wee bit of tension, the more sure. your larynx takes on a wee bit, the tongue, everything takes on a bit more tension. So it's slightly harder to get those folds to that more relaxed fat Got place. it. The fat place. And is there a way <laughs> to get them back to the fat place? Outside of, I'm going to say vocal placement might be a way to do that or... Tension release, really. Yeah. So some okay. gentle exercises that encourage a bit of release in the muscles around the larynx and in the vocal tract. So you can do tongue release, jaw release, yawns to open and release the, the back of the mm. throat a little bit. Okay. Also yep. gentle kind of rehab style glides up and down your pitch on whatever particular semi-occluded vocal tract exercise works best for you. So semi-occluded exercises are exercises that utilize a sound that sort of partially closes the mouth. So a classic one that everyone knows is a lip trill. But Got for it. some people, mm-hmm. a lip trill is quite a lot of effort and not the right one for them. Mm-hmm, Other versions mm-hmm. might be a gentle, puffy kind of woof sound. Okay. Or another one might be just a puffy TH. So Got those it. kind of sounds create a particular acoustic environment in the throat that allows vocal full vibration with minimal input. Mm, and that's a way to release tension. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So you work with students independently on vocal exercises, health, preparation. Yep. So take me through like what's a typical session with you like? How do you assess my yeah. vocal health and my vocal performance? You don't have to take me through it. Yeah, Just yeah, describe yeah. what's the process of that. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of ninja listening. So the mm. first session you have with me, you'll probably be like, why are we chatting so much and not like right, just right. getting started? And then I'm like, I've been listening to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Have you been listening to me so far? Like, <laughs> oh, you're great. <laughs> now I'm really piqued my interest. <laughs> So, yeah, I do a little, I don't know if you have Sherlock Holmes, the British program with Benedict Cumberbatch over in America, but he does these like really amazing scans where he looks at somebody and he just knows everything about them. Mm. It's like, boop, 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 boop. So I do a cheeky wee kind of Sherlock Holmes scan, like voice gotcha. assessment with, Okay, that's what part of my training is, is being able to listen and go, oh, mm-hmm. I hear this, I hear that, I hear the other. Mm-hmm. So I do that while we're having a wee chat. I make a few notes. I also collaborate that with why you've come. Sure. So someone may have come going, I'm losing my voice and I don't know why. Sure. And I will listen and go, well, it's this. <laughs> or someone will go, I'm losing my voice and it's because X, Y, Z. And I will go, I don't think it is actually. I think it's this. Or or I'll go, yes, okay. you're right, but let's all try this. So it's a bit of a collaborative process. And, and I, I talk a lot about what the needs are, what they expect from it, you know, how long we've mm-hmm. got together, that kind of thing. And we just sort of piece together a bit of a strategy. It's very explorative and it's very bespoke and back and forth. I describe mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. like kind of sadly... <laughs> It's a bit naff as a journey. It's like a journey, you know? Yeah. Like I don't do one-to-ones really anymore. I do two-session mm-hmm. quick top-ups or six-session kind of okay. packages because we start together in one place. And sometimes by session three, we've actually realized it's something completely different. And that's mm. often can be a bit disarming or exciting or interesting. Mm-hmm. As a voice technique coach, you just have to respond to that, you know? I have mm-hmm. to teach what's in the room 
or the Zoom. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. In front that makes of sense. Me. Same with any mm. coaching, really. There's no one size fits all. Right. It's a very back and forwards process. Sometimes I give you stuff. I say, go away, work on that for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm give me a shout, how's it going? And we go, well, this is working, that's not working. And, you know, Mm -hmm. we assess it really as we go along. It's a really lovely, lovely process. I love one-to-ones because it's so bespoke. And at the moment, Mm -hmm. I tend to get a lot of people who are like, I've tried this coach or that coach or the other coach and we still can't work out what this is. And sometimes that's nothing to do with the coach. It's just... Mm -hmm the learning place the person is in or, Mm -hmm, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on in their life. Maybe they weren't open to receiving certain information. You know, often it takes a wee while to find the right coach for you and stuff. And, you know, people come to me and maybe go someone else. Like, like that's just what happens. Mm -hmm, But yeah, mm -hmm, I do get a lot mm -hmm. of, what's this weird noise my nose makes? Or I can't work out what's happening on this cluster of sounds or quite Mm -hmm. specific stuff. And now at the moment, mic specific stuff, which is what my book's about. It's like voice for mic users. (laughs) users. <laughs> oh, so let's talk about that because you do, you have a new book out. Yeah, and let's talk about that because I was just going to ask you about for being on the mic, what are your tips for being on the mic? So this yeah. is phenomenal that you've got a new book out. I do. It's called On the Mic. Okay. <laughs> Straightforward. And there no you messing. go. It's yeah. called On the Mic and it's voice training for voiceover artists, podcasters, speakers, and presenters. So basically... Uh-huh. Anybody who uses a microphone, because that seems to be the people that come sure. to me. <laughs> sure, and absolutely. Yeah, it's been a really interesting and exciting journey, kind of consolidating all my knowledge into that sort of a place. I think there are a couple of things with mic speaking. Is Number one, there's a different type of energy that's needed. So mm. again, this can differ from me sat here in my booth with this mic to mm-hmm. somebody stood on a stage doing an expert sure. speaking gig. Sure. So it's about understanding the energy that you need for the space that you're in. Mm -hmm. and the breath you might need for the space that you're in. And I think Mm -hmm. also as well, the style of the delivery is really interesting and how you can use the right kind of voice warm-up exercises to get you to a particular space. So if you have to sound conversational for your podcast, there are certain things you can do that are good for that. Mm -hmm. If you need to get ramped up and deal with your adrenaline to host a conference, Mm -hmm. then there are certain things you can do for that. So the whole point of the book is to like, Go through a lot of scenarios, go through the voice training process that I advocate, which is body, breath, sound, speech, and just end up with a big fat old toolkit of things that you can piece together in a way that works for whatever mic context you need. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Now, is this your first book? Yes. I mean, up wow. until this point, I think I'd written Instagram captions. That was about it. Right, right. Well, I know I feel like I've written a ton of blogs and I know you've got a great blog out there too. Mm-hmm. And I'm part of your newsletter. So it's very oh. exciting. So your first book. And yeah. what was that process like? Because I, of course, I'm thinking about it. And of course, everybody says, Anne, you need a book. So writing a book to me, I'm just, I have so much respect <laughs> God, because so I know you how much first. time, <laughs> well, I know how much time it must take. So yeah. what was the process like for you? I I really enjoyed it, actually. Mm -hmm, Really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. The hardest bit was starting, like with Mm -hmm. everything. Right. I did a lot of procrastinating. I did a lot of having my, whether (laughs) you believe in it or not, imposter syndrome on my Mm -hmm. shoulder going, what are Mm -hmm. you doing? Who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Um, So I did a lot of inviting my imposter syndrome to sit with me while I explored what was happening. Mm -hmm. I was like, come on then, we'll do it together. As soon as I started each little writing session, I I was great. I loved it. I mean, Mm -hmm. you get to the end of the first draft and then you're like, what the hell is this? Mm. <laughs> so actually what was more exciting and interesting and fulfilling was the editing process and playing around mm-hmm. with it. So my advice is set wee targets, wee regular targets yeah. that are yeah. achievable for you. Don't edit as you go because I got caught up in that and it took longer <laughs> than I wanted to to get to the end of the first draft. But just get a first draft done. Wow. Interestingly, what happened for me was it started as one book and by the time I'd finished the draft, it was another book. So... I oh, wow. sort of had to go back and change things up a wee bit. I okay. actually really enjoyed it. Really Fantastic. Enjoyed it. I feel very proud, but also it is a scary thing, putting mm-hmm, it out there. Mm-hmm. But you just have to remember who you're writing it for. I spend a lot of time as well basking in the shadows of the greats who've come before me. And like mm-hmm, there are so many mm-hmm. incredible practitioners out there who I still learn from daily mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. whose books I read and who I just think are remarkable. And I did do a lot of, what if they think my book's terrible? My business coach was like, who are you writing the book for? And I was like, well, my clients. And they're like, like, I know it matters Do they think you're you, terrible? Probably but, not. No. <laughs> Ever. Do they care? <laughs> yeah. No. They have been asking you for a book. So they're going to be really excited. And do you think those people who you think are amazing are going to look at you and go, ugh, gross, <laughs> yeah. you wrote a book? Yeah. Or are they going to go, 
that's well done. We've been there. About actually. time, right? <laughs> About time. There we go. So, Fantastic. Actually, yeah, I've had some lovely. I reached out to a few mentors to help me, like mm-hmm. edit a little bit, and and they were really complimentary. So I'm really pleased with it. I feel. It is the first one. <laughs> well, I am so excited. I'm so going to rush out and get it. So how can bosses get this book? Yeah, so it is on my website. If you mm-hmm. go to onthemicbook.com, okay. onthemicbook.com, it should take you to the page where you can buy Perfect. it. Perfect. Actually, it'll be it's on Amazon. So just, and it'll be on Amazon as well. Yeah, just, Fantastic. Just do that. Stick Fantastic. it on Amazon. And how can people get in touch with you in addition to buying your book? How can they get in touch with you if they want to work with you? Oh, well, probably my website, nickredmanvoice.com. That's Perfect. probably the best thing. I'm also on the island stand, TikTok and all that kind of nonsense too. <laughs> <laughs> so you can probably find me anywhere by putting Nick Redman in. Perfect, perfect. Well, Nick, it has been a pleasure. Congratulations. I'm very Thanks. excited. I'm going out there and getting a book now. And I actually want to be contacting you because I do have some questions about how maybe you can custom work with me with some of my voice Ooh, questions yeah. that I have. So thank you so much again. Yes, absolutely. Bosses, do you have a local nonprofit that's close to your heart? Well, if you ever wish that you could do more to help them, you certainly can. Find out more at 100voiceswhocare.org to learn how. And a big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You too can connect and network like bosses. Find out more at IPDTL.com. Bosses, have an amazing week. Nick, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.